Hello everybody, it's Miss Amy. I hope that you've had a wonderful week. I sure have missed doing Children's Chapel with you all each Sunday. So I thought today we could do Children's Chapel from my house. This Sunday is a very special Sunday that we call Palm Sunday. And you may remember that when we come to church on Palm Sunday, we all receive the long palm fronds. And that gives us a clue as to why this Sunday is called Palm Sunday. The palm frond is actually a long leaf from a palm tree. And you all have probably seen palm trees on your travels maybe to Florida or California or Georgia or South Carolina. And where Jesus lived, there were lots of palm trees also. And during that time, the palm branch represented to the people victory or great joy. And they would use the palm fronds and wave them whenever a special person came into town, such as a king or a governor or somebody else that was really special to them. So, during the time of the story that we will hear today, it was Passover, and Jesus and his disciples traveled in to Jerusalem for the Passover meal. And before they entered, Jesus told one of his disciples to go and find a donkey. He told him exactly where he could find it and to bring it to him. And so the disciple went and got the donkey, brought it to Jesus, and Jesus rode that donkey into Jerusalem. And as he rode into town, the people saw him, and they were so excited. And they took palm fronds, and they waved them in the air, and they were treating Jesus as if he were a king. They laid out their coats on the ground as he passed by and for the donkey to walk over. And they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And that was a really special thing that they were saying. They were saying that Jesus was the king, the king that they had been waiting for. And they were so excited to see him. So Jesus entered into Jerusalem with great excitement all around him from the people. But soon, that excitement was going to change. And Jesus would be turned over by those same people to the rulers who would then take him and try him. And he would be convicted and he would be later nailed to a cross. But before we get to that part of the story, let's talk about what happened whenever Jesus and his disciples made their way to an upper room to have the Passover dinner. So today I'm going to read to you from our Jesus Storybook Bible, and many of you may have these at home. And I'm going to read to you the story that's titled, The Servant King. And I'm going to show you the pictures here. And then I'm going to read to you. It was Passover, the time when God's people remembered how God had rescued them from being slaves in Egypt. Every year, they killed a lamb and ate it. The lamb died instead of us, they would say. But this Passover, God was getting ready for an even greater rescue. Jesus and his friends were having the Passover meal together in an upstairs room. But Jesus' friends were arguing. What about? They were arguing about stinky feet. Stinky feet? Yes. That's right, stinky feet. Now, the thing about feet back then was that people didn't wear shoes. They only wore sandals, which might not sound unusual, except 
that the streets in those days were really, really dirty. And I don't just mean dusty dirty, like really filthy, gross, stinky dirty. With all those cows and horses everywhere, you can imagine the stuff on the streets that ended up on their feet. Ew. So anyway, someone had to wash away the dirt, but it was a dreadful job. Who on earth would want to volunteer to wash people's dirty, stinky feet? Only the lowliest servant. There's someone washing feet. We're gonna find out who. I'm not the servant, Peter said, nor am I, said Matthew. Quietly, Jesus got up from the table, took off his robe, picked up a basin of water, knelt down and started to wash his friend's feet. You can't, Peter said. He didn't understand about Jesus being the servant king. If you don't let me wash away the dirt, Peter, Jesus said, you can't be close to me. Jesus knew that what people needed most was to be clean on the inside. All the dirt on their feet was nothing compared to the sin inside their hearts. Then wash me, Lord, all of me, Peter said. One by one, Jesus washed everyone's feet. I am doing this because I love you, Jesus explained. Do this for one another. Now, one of Jesus' friends had made a bad plan. No one else knew what the bad plan was, but Jesus knew, and so did Judas. Judas was going to help the leaders capture Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Go on, Judas, Jesus said. And Jesus, Judas got up from the meal, left the room, and walked out into the night. You see Jesus, he's preparing the meal. Then Jesus picked up some bread and broke it. He gave it to his friends. He picked up a cup of wine and thanked God for it. He poured it out and shared it. My body is like this bread. It will break, Jesus told them. This cup of wine is like my blood. It will pour out. But this is how God will rescue the whole world. My life will break and God's broken world will mend. My heart will tear apart and your hearts will heal. Just as the Passover lamb died, so now I will die instead of you. My blood will wash away all of your sins and you'll be clean on the inside in your hearts. So whenever you eat this and drink this, remember, I've rescued you. Jesus knew it was nearly time for him to leave the world and go back to God. I won't be with you long, he said. You are going to be very sad, but God's helper will come, and then you'll be filled up with a forever happiness and won't ever leave, that won't ever leave. So don't be afraid. You are my friends, and I love you. Then they sang their favorite song and walked up to their favorite place, an olive garden. Now this 
Passover meal that Jesus went to celebrate with his disciples on that Sunday that we now remember as Palm Sunday, that is like the communion that we celebrate every Sunday whenever we take our communion bread and wine, we remember that Jesus' body broke and his blood was shed when he went and was nailed upon the cross and died. And he died on that cross because he loves us. And he said in the story, when we were just reading the story today, that we can remember Every time we celebrate communion together, we can remember that Jesus loves us so much and he wanted us to be with him forever. So he died upon the cross. And next week will be Easter. And we'll talk about Easter more next Sunday. But we know that on Easter, Jesus rose from the dead and through him, we were made children of God through his death on the cross and his resurrection. We were made children of God so that we could live with him forever. And Jesus says, as, says to us, as he said to his disciples, he loves us so much and he is our greatest friend and that he is always with us. And that is really the most wonderful news that anyone could ever know. Jesus is with us always. I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. And just know that I am thinking about you always. Bye.